Hey guys, it's your favorite gold miner prospector and geologist Jeff Williams and today I got a big surprise for you. That's right, I brought my banjo. I got two of my two favorite prospectors and geologists. Alex Stolbear. Larry Martin. That's right. And this is a senior geologist here on the Comstock load. This guy knows more about rocks than, gee, I think even Slim. We're going to get on back into this little drift right here and he's going to teach you some stuff you've never heard or read in any books. I guarantee it. Come on. Let's, let's go. go. All right, let's go. And look, they've got their pegboard, their tag board, in and out. All mines got to have them, so that way you know who's underground and who's not. That was uh, first started in 1938 and then was uh, shut down in, after the War Act of uh, October 27th, 1942. It was shut down in April of 1943. And it was uh, constructed by Harry Bennett and uh, Chip Wilson. And it was part of the Dayton Consolidated Operation. And what we have here is an asphalt tough contact with the andesite lava flow. You'll maybe see some, some water lane textures in the asphalt. And in that particular unit, we'll also find uh, petrified wood. Not in this unit, in the, this one that's up on top. We had a, a headache rock right here. Oh, a headache maker. And, and so we took the Sierra Blasters. So my buddies in, in uh, Carson has a Sierra Blaster, and with uh, three shots, we shot it off. Nice. And the, remember, the Sierra Blasters, you do not need a... A, uh, a license. A, a license. So the New York shaft that we drove past? Yeah. Um, I was, I don't, I haven't seen it personally. Someone told me that worked down in the lower levels of the New York. They said that they left an electric tram underground. There nice. With some more cars. Cool. Well, we need to get down in the New York mine then. No? Hey, it's the mother lord, la -e. Ooh. Okay, on the reverse circulation drill is that on conventional water well drills is that the, the chips that come out from the Breakage of the drill bit go up along the wall of the hole. Those can contaminate all the way from the bottom to the top. On reverse circulation, it goes through an inner tube, so you don't have the contamination from the wall rock as much. Okay, there can be, but we try. We minimize it here at the Comstock by a method that every 20 foot, that's a length of one drill rod, we have them circulate, clean out the hole before we pressurize and put on another, another rod to continue another 20 feet. Right. So if we have some contamination, at least we may be minimizing it to only a couple of feet. Right. Core, on the other hand, is actually taking a piece of a diamond bit that will go through the rock and you will have, for instance, HQ3 is what we use, is 2.3 2 inches diameter uh, core and it's whole, whole rock core. But when you get a core hole into a zone that's highly fractured, you, you'll just have rubble in, in your right. core. Right, makes sense. So we, we try to orient our core um, and we survey each, each hole we survey each hole on, on reverse circulation also, if beyond 500 feet. What we, in our experience, in the first 500 feet, is that it goes pretty well true. It's always going to go a little bit to the right, and it's going to droop down ever so slightly, uh, if it's an angle hole. Believe it or not, if you hit clay, it'll raise it up. If you hit harder rock, it'll drive it down. Oh, wow, <laughs> look at this. I know it's... It's another tool. There it is, coming across. And did you notice when we got right here, the earthy smell? Yeah. Okay, that's when I love that because I know that not only is it probably higher humidity yeah. or because of the clays, but it's also mineralized, highly mineralized. Look at these blocks have been brecciated. Wow. And that brecciation is not the wall rock here. Those are different. See how they're black? Yeah, exactly. Okay, they're coming from down below, up. Hypogene. So this is a breccia that's coming from below. Wow. And this is, this, I know this runs around 07 ounces <laughs> on an average, around five feet wide. But I could, I could high grade it and get 10 ounce, 0.2 ounces right in there. Nice. 
And this is what you would describe as hypogene, correct? Hy hypogene is upwelling. And, and supergene so, is downwelling. Yes. But see, those, that rock right there is not the same as the wall rock. It came from a source down below. And I can't tell you exactly how far down. It could be several hundred feet. It could be at least 300 feet. It, and it, some of the black looks like, like an intrusive. Yeah, I was going to ask, is the black rock a mafic mineral maybe, or is it basement? I don't know if it's basement. If it's magnetic, it's the mafic dike. Yeah, look at that, all the brecciation in there. But if it's altered, it's not going to be magnetic. Yeah, it's it's a little too altered. But, uh, maybe a little, little oh, weakness. That, that one was. That, yeah, one was that was a little bit no, weak. That's a black, black mafic dike fragment. Nice. Right there. Yeah, it's sticking just a little bit. And if you remember in the Comstock history of the black dike, Here's that the... was always around the high grade stopes. Right. The black dike. And we, we, in our exploration efforts, we used the mafic dikes to, to help guide our drilling. My best hole on the Comstock was we, we were drilling a hole and we got captured by a black mafic dike. I offset at 25 feet, and we had 300 feet of 0.1 ounces. Jeez. And the, the clays that you find in the middle? Sometimes they have gold, and sometimes they don't. If they're limonite rich, in there, so on. Since we do have that earthy smell, is that we probably have the kaolin clays in the Montmorillo at night. Right. Theolite. Have you sampled you, these? Yes. And? High grade. Yep, that's see. what I thought. This is your, your girth. Yeah, right I was there. looking at this right here. Yep, that's greater, greater than a tenth ounce. You can see the manganese yeah. right there, like a little manganese pocket. Exactly. Yeah, you can see tons of manganese oxide. There's a little piece of girth right this there. This is a nice zone right here. Yeah, you just leave me alone for a day in here. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> so there was one report I came across here at the Dayton. It was further down off the Dayton shaft on the between the 300 and 400 foot level that they mined a pocket that ran roughly 21 ounces per ton. Wow. Now you're I, talking. I don't know how big, I don't know how big the pocket was. Uh, they didn't give a tonnage, but the grade recovered was 21 ounces per ton. Yeah, you can see the manganese that, that's, that's good. That's a good one. Right there. Well, the manganese it's, it's happened here, is that we will have little nodules, more manganese on the periphery of it. You have this little zone here that's haloed, has the limonite in the middle and manganese around the edges. Nice. Then little pieces of girthite in there. So I, I'm almost certain all that probably runs. It's almost like kaolinite. Yeah, it will. You can have gold in that, yeah. A little clay ball. So the clay is is breaking down from, which is limonite, and it's collecting and the moisture is making it into a mud. Is it adularia? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all it is, quartz adularia. Yeah. Nice. Oh, geez, it just falls oh, right man. out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can dig it with my finger. Those are my favorite kind of ores. Right? Yeah, because it's broken down so much, you know there's gonna be good stuff in it. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. There it is right there. Oh, look how soft that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a good pocket. Mm. We're just getting to it. The, the average size of the gold is 20 microns. Okay. But when we come to our vent area, is that uh, the pieces that we find are half the size of a pinhead. Nice. You got invisible gold. Look at all that. Manganese. And this was a black smoker. So how did you dismiss, dismiss their claims 
as it being marginal and what accepted your your ideology that it's a smoker well it it has a geometry that is similar to a smoker okay but we didn't it didn't uh, surface right this is all underground right and and so we we feel that the the manganese found a it's a this is a vent so there there was a fracture that opened up and the manganese is, is on either either vent boundary and it goes straight on up but it doesn't daylight does it, it doesn't surface it does it daylights it's we found it on the surface oh nice you'll see it you'll see it uh, later on in the trip it's getting better larry it's getting better i'm well, loving it well this this is this is a high point right here is from here to the back is that it's it's still the that's the end of it right there oh i see yeah and that would be at 485 feet so you're saying 20 maybe 50 feet this direction there's some big stopage yeah yes so this is a giant borehole that they did to find out what was in the mountain and they said hey now that we know we're gonna go north and then we're gonna get under it and we're gonna stope the heck out of it that was actually the stoping was done prior before this was put in really yes this was to evaluate it in the 1930s 1940s see? oh so the stoping was done in 1922. that's a this is a giant borel yeah, yeah. And there was also stoping that took place in the 1870s and 1880s, early. And they just continued on working it. I mean, the Dayton seems like it had life off and on from 1870 to all the way up through the 1930s. Wow. White ore, which is a very sacroidal, sugary, white quartz with free gold in the quartz. Nice. And yep. one of the Donovan claims, the sucre means sugar. Yeah. That yeah. Sugar quartz, and it was a north east okay. as yeah. well. It was the borehole. Yeah, they made this mess. Yes, they did. Yep. Oh, I'd be curious to see. Oh, you got the numbers from the old days, right? When they pulled out next door soaps. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It was the highest uh, producing gold mine in Lyon County. Um, the county border is at Devil's Gate. Right. The Dayton produced more gold than any of the other mines in all of Lyon County. There's actually a mill here in Silver City that kept processing ore through World War II. And because it was a, uh, a Chilean mill, it wasn't allowed to draw people's attention. And they just kept on processing people's gold ore secretly throughout the war. This one, this one is... You can see the girthite here. You can pan gold out of this one. Oh, nice. There's, there's the girthite. But that one, it used to be out to here, but with the tours that we've had through here, is that some of it's missing. Oh. <laughs> so but there this, might be more missing today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd take it from right here or right there where that girthite. Can you tell the people about girthite? Because a lot of people aren't familiar with that word. Okay, the girthite. Here we've identified the the primary sulfide besides pyrite as marcasite. And the marcasite occurs as pyrite pyritohedrons or five-sided pyrite crystals. When they're oxidized, it turns to girthite. And the gold will be in the girthite crystal right there. So this is a this would be a nice one to high grade. Jeffrey. Nice. Oh, yeah, you I, don't have to I, tell me twice. I, 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 I take that right there. Oh, yeah, it's going to disappear. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to get some. Oh, yeah. Look at all that girth. Yeah. You ever get gold fever, Larry? <laughs> Since I was in sixth grade. Yeah. You can't shake it, can you? <laughs> Who would want to, anyway? Oh, yeah, right there. Show that on the camera. See that? See how the the quartz that's carrying the gold has a it it's illuminated with in. I believe it's through the crystal structure of the quartz, but this is a jade light. That's a jade light. This is a jade light. It's to give a quick analysis of of the.
purity of the jade. And I said, what happens if it can work underground with the quartz veins? Well, right. Here it is. There it is. Yeah. You can see that one clear as day and not over here. A dilation zone. This is clearly a dilation shape right here. Yeah. It's a little lens. Exactly. So think of that being multiplied by a thousand. Wow. So that's what this, this is. This, we are in the mega breccia. Two and a half. Two and a half. Hey, that wasn't a reference to my height, was it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It could be a quick tool for uh, ore control. Or high grading. Or high grading. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you could go out on a dump someplace that has multiple generations of quartz and just go out at night and lamp the quartz on the ground and see what happens. <laughs> 